Steve Rowling is a social worker by training and a revered and respected community leader whose humility and convictions in serving the most vulnerable, especially in relation to how the poor are cared for within our health systems, earns him the designation, at least in our, our book, as a man of integrity and salt of the earth. Steve has served on the Ethics Committee at St. Joe Medical Center many years ago when the center was first helping to organize it. Sister Rosemary Flanagan, who most of you know and saw this evening, cherished him and knew that his insights and perspectives were truly patient-focused. In his role with the Business Journal, he sought to address the needs of health care and worked often with the center over time. As director of the Missouri Department of Social Services, we knew he had a reliable, we had a reliable contact in Jeff City and would, could always rely on him for sound information as policy issues arose. During his tenure at the Healthcare Foundation of Greater Kansas City, Northland Healthcare Access and the center successfully approached the Healthcare Foundation to find a solution to the need for specialty care for the underserved. MetroCare, now in its seventh year, has recruited over 900 specialists in the Metropolitan Medical Society to donate their services to those in need. Steve believes in the vision of the center and in helping us to think about how to make our work successful for others. Prior to Steve's leadership as founding president and CEO of the Healthcare Foundation of Greater Kansas City, he provided leadership to several other organizations, including the State of Missouri, senior vice president of the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, publisher of the Kansas City Business Journal, and other positions in public service. Steve is married to Judy, and I'm sure besides proudly laying claim to the titles of husband and father, I know his most coveted title is that of grandpa. Please join me in congratulating Steve Rowling. Two weeks ago, I became a pawpaw for the fourth time. So that's my greatest, uh, that's my greatest accomplishment. It's a joy to be with all of you tonight. And Jan, you're absolutely right. This is what every non for profit should be. A sterling idea executed to perfection. And look at the good you've done. In thinking about the significance of celebrating 30 years of service, I think about two quotes, one of which Sister Rosemary's always used. Sister Rosemary's always a step ahead of me. Margaret Mead's quote, and it is so true, a small group of thoughtful people can change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that it's that ever has. Just think what a small group of visionary people, a small group of visionary people, have changed the views of millions and millions of people, not just in this region, not just in this nation, but around the world, and how we think about ethical and death and dying issues. Truly amazing accomplishment in 30 years. And the second quote is from our beloved Kansas City and Ewing Kaufman. Mr. K told us, always, always treat others as you want to be treated, with dignity, respect, and humility. And that's what the center is trying to teach us all. It has led our nation and our region in discussing complicated and sometimes gut-wrenching issues in a thoughtful and reasoned manner by authentically listening and talking with our loved ones, while at the same time respecting their dignity and their final wishes. Because of the Caring Conversation booklet that I hope each of you will pick up tonight when you leave, and Joanne Berkeley, I give her credit, Father Noam Rodert, Myra, I give their credit, Sister Rosemary, many years ago they told me about this booklet and asked me to sit down and read it and they provided me some counseling. In November of 19, in November of 2003, the day after Thanksgiving, my father was told that he had three months to live. Hard, hard thing to hear. I was in the room when the doctor told him. The first month, my dad lived two months after that. He didn't quite make the three months. The first month, he had pretty good health, 
And frankly, we had time to talk about things that in the previous 55 years, we somehow just never had time to talk about. And I knew exactly what he wanted for his future. I knew what he wanted. He told me. We signed the legal documents. The day before my dad died, he was in a coma the last three or four days. My dad was in a coma. He kind of opened his eyes. I was happy to be holding his hand at the time. And he looked at me and he said in a mumbled voice, Steve, I signed it. I signed it. And I nodded. I said, I know, Dad. That tube is just for pain. I know you signed it. What a gift. What a gift. Get this book. Look at it. Read it. It will change uh, your life. My dad and my mom taught me how to live, but they also taught me how to die. On behalf of the Healthcare Foundation Board and staff, on behalf of the wonderful doctors and staff at MetroCare, imagine 900, I think it's a little more than that now, maybe 1,200 docs in this community provide free care to poor people because it's the right thing to do. An amazing accomplishment. We all are inspired, deeply inspired, and we all are challenged to leave the world a better place and we found it because of what this center has accomplished. I can't wait to see what this small group of center visionaries can accomplish in the next 30 years because, as you remember, the only thing that changes the world is a small group of thoughtful people. Thanks for your leadership.